And I'm going to ask those who are outside to just forget about this food issue. Just come and focus on the word. We will mind that later. This is the most important time. And I want everyone who's outside to come inside. Please. Amen. Thank you. So sit down and let us listen to the word of God. As I was saying, today it's a special day. Uh, it's a special day for the church. It is a special day for the body of Christ because um, so many people actually in North America do not know why we celebrate Easter. When you go on CP24 right now, you are going to notice that some people are off. They were off on Friday and they are off today because they are happy to eat turkey on Easter. Amen? Probably some of you also are preparing to eat turkey today which is not wrong because it's good food. Some people are preparing themselves to make eggs, you know, just to, because it's Easter, because that's the tradition that has been up in North America. But Easter is not about eating turkey. Easter is not about eating eggs. Easter is something more powerful than the turkey and eggs of North America. The story of Easter started with a man we know called Jesus. Jesus, who was our heavenly God and who is still our God. He came on earth, he took the body of a human being, and the Bible says he lived like a man, he was hungry like a human being, he was weary like a human being. In, I think in the book of, uh, I believe, uh, John chapter 11, the Bible says, on verse 35 that Jesus cried when he was at the tomb of Lazarus so Jesus had all the feelings that you and me have when Jesus went to a place people were celebrating in Cana he rejoiced with them, he, he blessed them with miracles, when, when Jesus went to places where they were dead he, he rose up the dead when Jesus was concerned about his death in Gethsemane he cried because he was in God but living in the human flesh so Jesus experienced what you and me experienced. And the Bible says that Jesus was hanged on the cross. Jesus was crucified. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus was buried. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Say amen with me. Amen. That's the story of Easter. Easter is about celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so this Sunday, I want to talk about seven things about the resurrection of Jesus. Seven important things that we need to know about the resurrection of Jesus. So number one, the resurrection of Jesus occurred on a Passover that we call Easter. For those who are from Africa, we call it Pasaka. Even in Hebrew, it's Pasaka, it's Passover. It was on the day Israel remembered when God took them from Egypt, from slavery. Are we together? Passover means when the Lord rescued Israel from, from the slavery in Egypt, the Bible says this feast was mandatory. Every time when they want to remember what God has done for them, on Passover, they will celebrate the Lord. Amen? Say amen. amen. Come on, say good amen today. Amen. This Sunday may be a day where you are going to remember what the Lord has done for you. We probably have not been in Egypt, but we have been in some form of Egypt where we are coming from. Everybody here has a story. Everyone here has once went through certain lives that did not please God. Probably it's not your case if you're a child, but your parents probably might have been going to that life. Some people were oppressed by alcohol. Some people were oppressed with uh, 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 stealing. Some other people were oppressed with depression. Some other people are drug addicted. That is an Egypt. But this is the, I am declaring in the name of Jesus that if the devil was playing with your life before, because Jesus rose on this day, May your life be free. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. On Easter, I remember in the book of Acts chapter 12, the Bible says, Herod arrested Peter. And when he arrested Peter, he first of all killed James. The Bible says James was beheaded. 
And he was going to do the same thing with Peter. But because it was Easter, suddenly because of the prayer of the saint, Aaron changed his mind. He said, let's wait until they celebrate Easter. Act chapter 12. When they will celebrate Easter, then we can move forward and do what we have planned to do. My brothers and sisters, God is able to stop the plan of enemy against your life that you can celebrate it today and the victory is coming in the name of Jesus. Oh, so you didn't get that. Say good amen. Amen. God is able to stop the plan of your enemies. God is able to stop the plans of witchcraft. He is able to stop the plan of those who are plotting against you so that you can just be in his presence. Amen. When they celebrate God on Easter, an angel of God came in the cell and Peter was free because of Easter. Amen. Amen. So, for us, the church of Christ, we celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Israel remember their freedom from Egypt, but we remember our freedom from sin. Amen. Amen. Number two points you need to know about Easter or about the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus took place on a Sunday morning. How many people know that Jesus rose up on a Sunday morning? Oh, I don't see a lot of hands. Come on, let me see your hands. Just wave with me like this. Jesus rose on a Sunday morning. When you read Matthew chapter 21, 28 verse 1, the Bible says on that Sunday morning, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the tomb. They went to visit the tomb because they wanted to see if the Messiah was still there and to put anointing oil upon him to preserve his body. There is a reason why we come on Sunday to worship God. So many people think that, oh, uh, 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 God said you should rest on Sabbath, you know? And, and so many people have developed that. We have the seven, uh, the, the, what do you call them, the seven Adventists? We celebrate God on this Sunday because Jesus rose on Sunday. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Oh, yes, we are here not because of the law, because so many people are now stopped by the law. I can't do this because it is stubborn. No, we are here because we want to celebrate God. Amen. If Jesus, the master of the law, the king of kings and the lord of lords, has chosen to risen on Sunday. We have chosen to praise him on Sunday. And tonight I shout praise the Lord. Amen. Shout praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. Today it is the day of our miracle. Today it is the day of our visitation. Today it is the day where the Lord will break the yokes of the enemy. Because on that day the Bible says Jesus did not only rise. He went in hell. He took the devil. He took the keys that were condemning you. That's what the Bible says. And then he showed it in spectacle by triumphing at the cross. Then Jesus went in heaven before the throne of the Father. The Bible says that before nobody could enter the Holy of Holies, Jesus divided the curtain in two and he opened free access to everyone who believed in him. And the Bible says we now have an intercessor sitting at the right hand side of Father and who is interceding for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. If it is not because of the resurrection, where would we have been? Our Christianity without the resurrection of Jesus, it is in vain. Our life as Christians without Jesus does not make sense. We are here because he lives. We are here because he died and rose up. We are here because he's going to change your life today. If you believe it, say amen with me. Amen. Something amen. you need to know about the resurrection. The resurrection is the reason why the New Testament was written. Imagine, and this is what Paul is saying in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We read it, but I'm going to go through quickly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse, uh, verse 11, he said, But tell me this, since we preach that Jesus rose from the dead, why are some of you saying that there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not raised again. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless. You see that? If Jesus did not rise from the dead, this service is useless. You understand how important 
is the resurrection of Jesus. Paul says here, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave, but that can be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless. All who died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be beaten than anyone in the world. This is what the Bible says. If Jesus did not rise from the dead. In 2002, I was in Zimbabwe. I was talking to a Muslim guy. Because Muslims don't believe that Jesus Christ was hanged on the cross. Muhammad taught uh, Muslims that Jesus Christ was never hanged on the cross. They stole his body. There's no such a thing like resurrection. And so this is the verse they use. They use the, 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 the first part, the A part of this verse. And they say, even your own Bible, and that guy was from Tanzania. And you know how people from Tanzania, they are really, really eloquent when they are discussing in Swahili. You, <laughs> you can be lost completely. And this guy was deep in, in Islam. He told me, even your own Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that in fact, he said, if our hope in Christ is only for this, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. He said, Jesus never rose from the dead. But he didn't read the second part of this verse. On verse 21, he says, so you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun, belonging to Adam, everyone who belonged to Christ will be given a new life. Now we know for sure that Jesus is alive. Amen, somebody. Amen. The Bible did not only say that Jesus did not raise, but the Bible added say that because of the first man, Adam, who sinned, the same way the first man fell, the same way the second Adam has come and he has given a new life to every one of the names. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So the New Testament was written because Jesus rose from the dead. The second part of your Bible is real. Because he rose from the dead. There is no meaning to read the New Testament because the New Testament without Jesus doesn't make sense. It makes sense because it's the fulfillment of all the prophecy that were in the Old Testament. So our Christianity has a meaning. You being here, it has a meaning before God. You worshiping God. When I say lift up your hand and worship Him, it has a meaning. Because Jesus rose again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Fourth reason of resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ occurred on the seventh day of the week. It's in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 and Mark chapter 16 verse 1. Jesus rose on the seventh day. And I want to talk briefly about this number seven. The number seven in the Bible represent completion. The number seven in the Bible represent completeness. It represent fullness. It represent the perfection. Everything that God did, when he reached seven, that means it is perfect. When he created the, the earth, the Bible says on the first day he created the heaven and the earth, on the second day he created the whatever he created, and on the seventh day he saw that everything that was created was good. Then the Lord rest on the seventh day. Because God looked at that and said it is perfect. The number seven, uh, 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 it has uh, a perfection of both what is physical and what is spiritual. According to the Jewish culture or the Jewish uh, tradition, when I was reading this last night around 3 a.m., the creation of Adam occurred, according to a researcher, they said on October 7, 3,761 years before the, 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 death, the, uh, the, 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 the birth of Jesus Christ. October 7, 3,761 B.C. This is historically, because you know the Bible has been proven to be the word of God. Even historically speaking, even people who don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, they believe that Jesus Christ came on earth. They believe that Jesus Christ has been in the history of Israel. The Bible has been in the history of Israel. So being the church, I can not only limit myself on the spiritual aspects, I also look at 
also the intellectual aspect, the historical facts that prove that what we read, it is not some story written, it can be proven even with history. History has proven that Adam exists, that Jesus exists, meaning the resurrection of Jesus is also real, historically speaking. Say amen with me. Amen. That number seven was used seven times to describe the great creative work in Genesis chapter one, verse one. The number seven, it was used to represent the seven days in the week. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 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 yeah? that's seven, amen? I'm right, right? Yes. Come on, help me somebody. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Seven, right? That's seven days. God's Sabbath. Because so many people are like, we are Sabbath people. God's Sabbath was on the seventh day. God's rest was on the seventh day. Jesus rose on the seventh day. Oh, you don't get it. Say amen, somebody. The Bible is divided in seven major divisions. I'm just showing you how seven is very important in the things of God. When you read the Bible, you will see number one, there is the law that came with Moses, number one. Number two, you will see that there are prophets in the Bible. Number three, you will see that there are the writings of the Psalms. David wrote a lot of Psalms. Number four, we'll see the gospel and the book of Acts of Apostles. Number five, you will see the general epistles. Number six. Number six, we have the epistle of Paul. And number seven, we have the book of Revelation. Seven divisions of the word of God. Everything that God does, he makes sure it reaches the perfection and the fullness of what he does. So this Easter today, I decree in the name of Jesus, that if your health was not perfect, let it be perfected today in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree the name of Jesus. If your peace was not perfect, let it be perfect in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, I have come that you may have peace. And peace in abundance. Let you receive the peace in your marriage. Let you receive peace in your family. Let you receive peace at work. Let us receive peace even in the church. Somebody shout amen. 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 Number five reason that we should know about the resurrection of Jesus is that the resurrection of Jesus represents the beginning of what we call grace. <laughs> Say with me, grace. 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 Say it very well, grace. Grace. Jesus came with grace. Moses came with the law. When we say eye against eye or teeth against teeth, it was the law of Moses. But when we say our father who are in heaven, when we call him our father, it's an expression of love. Grace means love. Grace means God the Father conversation through the Son. When you read the epistle of Paul, it will say the love of the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Three important things. So meaning God the Father works at love level. God the Son works at the grace level. God the Holy Spirit works at the communion level and they all work together. Are you together with me? Amen. That's why Paul said in the book of Hebrew, chapter 9, verse 15, verse 17, chapter 9, 15 to 17, he said, I will now write in their mind and will put my law in their heart, but I will never again remember their sins and lawlessness deeds. Why did the Lord say that? Because every time when people sinned in the time of Moses, the Bible says God will kill them. When they sinned against the Lord at Mount Sinai, the Moses threw the Ten Commandments and they were all destroyed. But this time God is saying, hey, look, you are not going to work with the Lord that was killing you. Because my voice was probably too harsh on you. But this time, I will write these words in your mind. I will put my law in your heart. Meaning you are not going to depend on the physical tabernacle, but you will depend 
of the Holy Spirit in you. Say, the Holy Spirit lives in me. Shout, the Holy Spirit lives in me. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Say, I am a living tabernacle of the Lord. It is because of resurrection that you are the living tabernacle. Without the resurrection of Jesus, the Holy Spirit has no meaning in your life. Grace has no meaning in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me wrap up. Number six. The sixth reason we should know about the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that the resurrection has given us access to the Holy of Holy. Amen. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 19 to 22. The Bible says, And so dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly, that's the verse we read, we can boldly enter heaven most holy place because of the blood of Jesus, by his death, Jesus opened a new and a living covenant way to the curtains into the most holy place. That's the Bible saying this. Do you know that when Jesus Christ died, the curtain that was divided in the temple in Jerusalem was just the image of what was happening in heaven. Because that temple was built based on what the Lord showed Moses in heaven. And that was given to David and Solomon. And then that was built based on the, 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 the commands and the, the and instructions of God. So if a curtain that was separating people to meet God on earth was divided in two, that means even in heaven, the curtain was divided. If you have free access on earth to pray like you want, in heaven, you also have free access to come to the Father. That's why Hebrews say, now, it didn't say, if someone starts a sentence with now, that means there was something that came before the now. Are you there with me? There is something that came before now. He says, if before, you know, you could not enter. Now, come boldly. You know the meaning of coming boldly? You know the meaning of coming boldly? Yeah. Coming boldly, it is, you can feel free. Let me show you something. I like illustration. I can, can I use you as an example? Is that okay? Can you come? Yes. Can you give him a, she's your husband, right? So we can do this. Can you just kiss him like on the cheek or whatever? He's your husband. She did, she did it boldly. Now if I say, sister mommy, can you come kiss him? <laughs> what is your reaction? You go like, huh? Why? Because she doesn't feel free to do that. This is not his husband. Are you there with me somebody? Amen. That is how we are with God. This is God. This is us. Go boldly give him a hug. This is how the cross, the resurrection. Give him a long hug. <laughs> this is now what the cross has done for us. Before we were separated, before we were like, ah, can I give him a hug? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we didn't know our identity. No, the Bible is saying, now you can come boldly. I can give you a hug, yeah, man. <laughs> you can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain grace and mercy that you may be sustained in time of need. Why? Because of resurrection. Somebody shout resurrection. Resurrection. Come and shout resurrection. resurrection. If I were you, I was going to stand up and I say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus did some great stuff at the cross, my brothers and sisters. Before it was only Moses. It was only Aaron in the Holy of Holy. And if they jump, they die right there. Now Jesus is saying, hey, are you a sinner? Come boldly in my presence. If you repent your sin, I will remember no more. Oh, are you weak? You can't pray? Oh, come boldly in my presence. I can just look at you and I will give you word. I will eat the sin for you. Are you weak? You can't read the Bible? Just come boldly. God is saying, come the way you are to me. I am the Lord of love now. I have loved you at the cross and I will love you because of the cross. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I didn't hear you. Shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the work of resurrection. Every limitation that was there, because of the resurrection, we can now go boldly in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Last point. The resurrection of Jesus 
There is no resurrection of Jesus without the blood of Jesus. Meaning we cannot talk about the resurrection of Jesus without talking about the crucifixion of Jesus at the cross. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that there is no life without blood. It is the blood of Jesus that gave us eternal life. It is the blood of Jesus that killed the life of sin in us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus, on that way to Gethsemane, I mean to Calvary, he shed his blood seven times. Number one, the Bible says he shed his blood at Gethsemane. Number two, he shed the blood when they were whipping his back. And according to the Roman culture, they would whip 39 times. Those kind of whip I'm talking about, they had some kind of nails. And when they whip you, they come with the flesh. The blood was just gushing, my brothers and sisters. Jesus suffered. Isaiah, when he was describing Jesus in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, he said, but it was because of it. He was wounded for our transgression. He said he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And he said, by his stripes, we are healed. Somebody say, by the stripe of Jesus, by the stripe of I am here. Say sickness. sickness, you have no power over me because I am healed by the power of his blood. Number three, Jesus bled internally. They beat him so much that he bled inside himself. He bled inside himself. Number four, they put the crown of thorn on his head. The Bible says blood was shedding. John chapter 19 verse 2 says, Soldiers planted a crown of thorn and put it on his head, and they put it on him on a purple robe. Number five, his hand were nailed at the cross. Number six, his feet were nailed at the cross. Number seven, they pierced his sides. So on these seven dimensions of the suffering of Jesus, you got seven levels of victory in your life. When he was releasing the drop of blood in Gethsemane, he gave you the victory on your willpower. Now you can say no to sin. Now you can say no to everything the devil is trying to tell you. He has given you the willpower that was stolen from Eve and Adam in the garden of Eve. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When he shed his blood, when they were weeping him at that post, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ was basically restoring your health. He was restoring and he was taking your luggages. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. He restored your health. Listen to me somebody. That, that's why right now, if you have cancer, you cannot say, oh, I am suffering with cancer. I have cancer. It's killed my mother. It's killed my, my, my grandmother. It's killed my father. Cancer is no longer yours. You have to change your vocabulary now. This is the time to say, by the stripes of Jesus, this cancer, if it killed my grandmother, if it killed my, my, my grandfather, if it reached me, it must stop because I'm a different gene. A, I have different DNA. I have the DNA of Jesus. I have the DNA of the cross. I have the DNA of resurrection. And so cancer, I come out in the name of Jesus because you do not operate according to the curse of your family. You do not operate according to the curse of your, your, your country. You do not operate according to the laws of Canada. You operate under the power of heaven. That's why Paul said, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. It is Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Now it's no longer about our family. It's no longer about your experience. Your past is gone. You have a new life in Jesus. You have a new future in Jesus. You have a new destiny in Jesus. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. I thought I talked to somebody today. Oh, stand up, say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody stand up and shout, thank you, Jesus. Shout loud, thank you, Jesus. Oh, the power of the blood of Jesus. They weapon. But yet, the chastisement that was supposed to be put upon you, he carried it upon his back to give you healing. He bled internally that he can give you prosperity. Somebody shout, prosperity is mine. Prosperity oh, is shout, mine. success is mine. Prosperity is Say, mine. healing is mine. Healing is Say, mine. I refuse failure. I 
I refuse failure. I refuse failure. I refuse failure. Oh, refuse it with passion. Say, I refuse failure. I refuse failure. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do like this. These things are prophetic when you do them. Say, devil, look at my finger. Devil, look at my finger. Show your finger, wherever you are. Show your finger. Say, out of my life. Out of my life. I am redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. So success is mine. Success is mine. Healing belongs to me. Healing belongs to me. The prosperity is mine. The prosperity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. See, my life is blessed. Oh. My life. Oh. Marriage is blessed. Oh, marriage is blessed. My family is blessed. Oh. My, family. my children are blessed. Oh. My, children are my church is blessed. Oh. My church. In the name of. In the name of Jesus. Oh. Jesus. Oh, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is alive, my brothers and sisters. The devil cannot finish your life. The devil cannot finish your life. As we are heading to the end of our teaching, they put a crown of thorn on his head. That restored your prosperity. The soldier, they thought they are laughing at him, saying, Oh, he's the king of the Jews. But yet he was the king of all kings. He was the Lord of all lords. His hand were nailed so that wherever you touch, God blesses it. Amen. Everything you put your hands on, God makes it successful. Amen. That's why I decree upon you today. That whatever you will touch because of the blood of Jesus shall succeed in the name of Jesus. I say it shall succeed in the name of Jesus. Ah, we refuse to be under the captivity of what we see. Because what we see, it is not what God sees. You know, you see your situation, you see your life, you see, you see the map that the devil is trying to draw uh, in front of you, and you say, oh, I'm finished, it is over for me. Let me tell you that the devil is a liar. The devil cannot determine your destiny. The devil does not has no clue about what has been, God has prepared for you because of the blood of Jesus. Whatever you touch shall be blessed. Whatever you do shall be blessed. Whatever you decide to do shall be blessed. Even when you think about it, it shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, shout hallelujah in this place. His feet were now to give you dominion. Step aside. We are going to be prophetic here. Don't be so kind here. We step aside. Let me show you something here. Step aside from your chairs. Come out of your chairs. His feet were nailed so that you can have dominion. Now look at wherever you are. Begin to walk and say, I command this land to obey me from today. Say it loud. In the name of Jesus. Father, I command this land to obey me because you suffered that dominion can be restored to me. Do it, do it with faith, with passion. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That everything you will do in Canada shall go forward because this land does not belong to the devil. This land does not belong to the occult. This land does not belong to the satanic cult. This land belongs to Jesus. And the blood of Jesus has released, has been released, that wherever you will put your hand, it shall be yours. Wherever you put your feet, it shall be yours. Oh, I decree in the name of Jesus that everything I set my feet upon shall be my territory. You will extend my territory. You will extend my dominion. Say, I am a man and a woman of influence, if you're a woman. Say, I am a man of influence. I am a man of Israel. Your feet gave me influence on my land. Say, to me, your feet, Jesus, gave me influence, give me influence on, my land. on my land. So I receive. So I receive authority, authority, influence, influence, and dominion, and dominion because of the blood. Because in the, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. shout a good hallelujah. Hallelujah. They pierce his side to give you back your joy. You did not get married to become an intercessor. You don't. You don't understand what I'm saying. I repeat again. You did get married. To become an intercessor because those who are in marriage 
especially in North America, it has become something bad. When you say I'm going to get married, everybody look at you like, are you sure? Especially for us, man. Are you really, really sure? <laughs> I remember when we were preparing our wedding with my wife. And I told someone, uh, we were working at the bank, in the same bank with my wife. So I told those people there, we are going to have our wedding. A guy called me, his name is Oliver, he called me. He said, um, are you really sure that you want to do this? I said, yeah, we were already blessed. In fact, we've been living together, but we were blessed already. He said, okay, okay, it's your own business. Because that's the lie of the enemy. So many couples been, have been suffering. They, 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 they look happy, but they, they have no joy. You know, certain people are suffering even to get children. They look nice, but they have no joy. Some people are struggling to get money, to get job, to get this and that. There is no joy. But let me tell you that on this Easter, there is a man called Jesus who shed his blood at the cross. And the Bible says they pierced his side. The water and blood came and gushed out of his side to give you joy. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree joy in my marriage. I decree joy in my life. Oh, you don't do it very well. I decree joy. I decree joy. And speak about joy. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Nothing can change it. Nothing can change it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for your resurrection. This Sunday, we bless you, Elohim. We bless you because you wanted to restore someone's life. And before I conclude, I feel in my heart that I should just uh, invite anyone. If you are here, maybe you lost your joy. Maybe you are depressed. Maybe you are in a condition of hopelessness. And you are wondering where my help will come from. I just feel that the anointing of God is here to restore you. You can just lift up your hand wherever you are. We will pray from here. Lift up both your hands and we're going to pray. Actually, as a matter of fact, let us all stand up and lift up our hand. I will invite Pastor Joshua. He's going to de declare a word upon each and every one as we are concluding. Let's lift up our hands to the throne of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let us lift up our hands on high. And the belief in our heart that the power of resurrection is moving in our lives. Jesus reigns. He's alive. He's a living Jesus. Yes, Lord. And today we are celebrating the living Jesus. Mighty Jesus. As you are, you are alive. Thank you, Lord. In your glorious name, oh Jesus, I declare in this morning. That the same spirit that rose you from the dead, that is the same spirit is moving in this room to bring life in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree life in our bodies in the name of Jesus. Whatever was dead in our lives, I declare life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare life in the name of Jesus. I declare life in the name of Jesus. At work, I declare life in the name of Jesus. In the business, I declare life in the name of Jesus. In the gifts, I declare life in the name of Jesus. In the talent, I declare life in the name of Jesus. Life in abundance in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fresh life. Holy Ghost, Spirit, that give us life. Let your glory, let your power. Be upon each one of us in the name of Jesus. Jesus.
same spirit, the spirit of resurrection. Hallelujah. Touch our lives in this morning. Don't be absent mind. The same spirit yes, that Lord. rose Jesus from the dead ah, is in this room. To rest things in your life. Hallelujah. Whatever was dead in your life, the spirit of life is in this room. In the name of Jesus, I declare it. Holy Spirit. We are embracing your presence in this room. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We declare in this morning that we are 